In today's Forza Horizon 5 video, I am going to show you how to take some nice juicy rollers exactly like these ones. Rolling shots are photos that are taken while the car is in motion. It will give you that nice blur around the car while the car is fully in focus. Aside from YouTube, one of my hobbies actually includes photography and it just so happens to be automotive. Here are just a couple of photos that I took, so I got a pretty good understanding of how to take a nice pic. The photo feature in this game is one of the coolest features I've ever seen in any game, whether you are a casual or you're even a YouTuber trying to get some nice pics for a thumbnail. Step number one. One, get yourself in a car that you would like to take photos of and let's get right into it. Before you start taking photos I would recommend going into settings, go to difficulty and make sure damage and tire wear is set to none. You can also adjust this just before you take a picture, however this is going to make it a lot easier and a lot more convenient. Next, go into controls and change the input mapping for the photo mode. I would recommend doing the right stick button if you are on controller, this way you'll always have your finger on that button and you'll be able to access the photo mode whenever you want. As for the horn, you can set that to the d-pad up, I don't normally really use that anyway. Now, when you're ready to take a picture and you're setting up with the location, make sure you scan it out first and have an idea in your mind exactly how you want the image to look. That includes whether you want a photo of the front, the back, or the side of the car, and what you would like in the background of the image. In our example right here, we are going to try and take a photo of the front of the vehicle. You will want to pick up some speed, and once you're going decently fast, you will want to open up the photo mode. You don't have to max out the speed of the car, however, you do need speed to gain that motion blur. As you guys see right now, you will be in photo mode, and you'll be able to set up the camera exactly how you like. If you take a look at the shadow being casted from the rear of the vehicle and the wing, that is why we're deciding to take a photo of the front. I simply do not like having that shadow in the photo, so that is the reason for that. At this point, you will want to position the camera exactly how you want the image to look. As you see right here, I went behind the rails, the barricades, and I actually decided to do some framing for this image. This is when you have an object in the foreground and you're looking at the car in the background. One more real important thing I wanted to mention is the closer the object is to your camera, the more motion blur it's going to have. As you you see the railing that is in front of me is almost blurred completely however the mountains in the background seem like they're frozen there is also a zoom feature in this mode if you're on the xbox you can use the controller's d-pad going up and down to zoom in or zoom out once you zoom in the image is going to look a lot more compressed i wouldn't recommend zooming in too much especially for rolling shots however if you would like to go for that wide angle look you can zoom out all the way and this is going to allow you to capture the whole environment once you've locked down the angles and you're satisfied with the position we are now going to go over the camera settings the first option we have is shutter speed. This option is responsible for the amount of motion blur that you create. The higher the number is, the more motion blur you are going to get. If you have it set to zero, it is going to look like the car is fixed stationary even though it is moving. This is something that every individual is going to have to play around with depending on the style of image that they like and the overall result they are going for. The next feature we have is focus. Since we are doing rolling shots and the background is blurred out already, this really doesn't have too much of an effect. If you would like to copy the exact setting that I have, I always keep it around 30 for these types of images. Next up we have exposure. In simple terms, the higher the number, the brighter the image, the lower the number, the darker the image. I would set this to 50, however, once we get into low light conditions, we'll be using it. Next we have an option called aperture. While you're doing rolling shots, this is pretty much useless. Instead, we use shutter speed. However, if you were doing still shots with the car being stationary, this is what would generate more background blur. I would recommend adding a little bit of contrast. The lower you go, the more faded the image will look. The higher you go, the bigger the difference will be between colors. The color is referring to the saturation, I would bump it up just a little bit and brightness is the brightness. Let's now take a look at sepia, the higher the number is, the warmer the image is going to get and it's going to give it a vintage vibe. Vignette, you can change the vignette type by clicking right bumper, either have it circular or linear. I would recommend adding a slight vignette, this is going to direct the focus of your eyes towards the center of the image. Last but not least we have temperature, the lower you set the number, the colder the image is going to look with a bluish tint, the higher you go the warmer it gets with a yellowy tint. Once you're satisfied with your image and you're ready to take the shot, go ahead and take the photo by clicking A if you are on the Xbox controller. It is now going to process the photo. Once it processes, go ahead and click A again. You can now save your image. If you are on the Xbox, go ahead and save it to your library. However, if you are on PC, I would highly recommend using the print screen function and pasting it into a software. This will allow you to maintain the maximum resolution as it's going to take the resolution of the monitor you are playing on. The last thing I would like to go over is how to take proper photos in low light conditions such as inside the tunnel. As you can see there is not much light and the image looks very high in contrast. You can't really pick out much of the car except for the light areas and the tail lights. This is where we work with the exposure feature, the brightness and the contrast in unison. The first option I would adjust is the brightness. You will want to go up high enough just so it gets you enough light. However, this will also make the image look very faded. To counter this and bring up the light areas, go into exposure and bump it up high enough so you get to see the whites of the image. Now that we brought back the white areas and the light areas, we need to bring 
back the darks, go into contrast, bump it up and you will now have some sharp darks. I know a lot of people do enjoy nighttime photography, especially when there is some nice lighting in the background, some neon lights. You can definitely go ahead and use this exact feature and this will give you the same result. Even though this game has an incredible photography mode and I give it mad props, there is no real way to edit your photos. The photos that I showed you at the start as an example were imported into Photoshop and I touched them up that way. I will now put up a couple photos on the screen showing before and afters how the photos look when I took them directly from the game and how they look after I touched them up. If you would like me to make a tutorial on how I edit photos in Photoshop and Lightroom, I can most definitely do that. Just make sure to leave me a comment saying so. I hope you did enjoy this video and it did teach you something. If you did and you would like to help me grow my channel, I would greatly appreciate if you could drop a like and leave a comment before you go. It helps the algorithm push my videos to other viewers. Also, if you would like to be the first to know when I upload and you would like to be notified, make sure you are subscribed with the notifications on. And until next time, it's been Kaspa Z and I'm out. Peace.